There are a lot of initiatives in the schools at the moment. Um, there's a, a training program called Restitution that many teachers have taken, which is connected to the work of restorative justice. And the intent is to uh, help in terms of the conflicts that arise in schools, and often it is to do with bullying, and bring together all the people involved and the parents and the teachers to resolve it in a way that everybody learns from the experience. So that's definitely one of those ways that RJ segues into the work of uh, the Department of Peace, potentially. I also can see like having a Department of Peace, something that's sort of part of the government would help with the funding of these different um, ventures, like restorative justice. That would be a very nice thing to imagine. It isn't a reality at the moment, and it's something that we struggle with, but we certainly see it as being an appropriate uh, way to go. And that is the emphasis we seek. We would like to see the government, on a domestic level, supporting initiatives that have come from civil society, like restorative justice, like alternative dispute resolution, like nonviolent communication, all of these areas uh, which did come out of civil society, out of innovation and um, uh, you know new ideas, which usually do emerge from civil society. You've just tabled the bill. Um, what happens? What is the next step? Well, I tabled it, and what was unusual about tabling at this time is that a Liberal member uh, seconded the bill. Normally that doesn't happen in the House of Commons, and the Honourable Jim Karajanis, a Liberal member from Scarborough Agent Court, uh, who has had an interest in, in this work with the Department of Peace Initiative, uh, actually seconded the bill when it was tabled in the House. It's helpful because it's, uh, it gives the, uh, the folks who believe in this idea a very specific tool in their lobbying work with MPs and Senators. Uh, it shows what this could look like, and it, it also will, I think, stimulate uh, political parties to look at it when they're preparing their election platforms and consider including this kind of idea in their platform. So this is, um, it's a growing movement. Uh, we have our, uh, in Canada, it, it, it's taken off. The bill has been tremendously important to us because it has raised the profile of our work. It has made all M members of Parliament aware that there is such a, uh, an idea of a Department of Peace and what it might achieve in Cabinet, in Canada, and in Canada, in the world. What we have to do is show governments and, uh, and the opposition parties who could someday be government that this is a practical idea, that it's a good idea. Here's an example of how it can be uh, initiated and it's going to be up to them to bring about that change. The general public don't really know uh, how a bill goes through Parliament. Can you very briefly explain the steps? Well, in private members' business, it starts with a lottery. They put all our names in a hat at the beginning of Parliament, draw us out and assign us a, a, um, a, a position in private members' business. So, for instance, this time I was drawn 65th, which means uh, I'm the 65th MP who gets to put forward a bill or motion in uh, private members' business. Uh, parliament, well, it's, about, it's over a year old now, this Parliament, and my 65th spot will probably come up sometime this coming spring. So it takes a while to move through that list. Uh, so when it comes up, it's guaranteed two hours of debate at second reading. If it passes second reading, it goes to a committee for further study and uh, amendment. It would then come back to the House for report stage debate, and then third, if it passes third reading debate. Uh, after if it passes all of those stages, it then goes to the Senate and has to go through the same process. I mean, one of the things we do have to remember on a number of scores is that ultimately, we require legislation to carry out those things we wish to see happen. Look at the evidence of the amount of resistance that exists uh, now to our um, military combat in Afghanistan. Well over the majority of Canadians oppose this, have consistently and in fact on a, and greater numbers over time. And also even with the desire no, no, the actual commitment of the government to end the mission in 2011, people are calling for that to be, and this is the majority of Canadians are still calling for that to end before 2011. In other words, bring the troops home now, okay? Now, essentially, this is, this is, this is not being responded to by government. 
because there's no direct linkages. There have to be channels. Governments do not respond unless there are channels, active, open channels, with which these issues of the citizens can be addressed. What this whole process will be about is educating members of parliament and senators. It'll be about educating the public and trying to, uh, to build support for, uh, for the establishment of a Department of Peace. We are working on three tracks. One is uh, building a chapter base from which people can carry out events, talk to members of parliament, and generally uh, put the idea out there and solicit support. The second track is building a popular movement. And we're doing that through a variety of activities that are like peace festivals and so forth that are, are carried out across the country. And then we're working internationally through the Global Alliance for Ministries and Departments of Peace. Because every success there is a, a success for everyone. So when Nepal and Costa Rica have declared Ministers of Peace, this is, enhances the opportunity in Canada. We need a new focus in government. We need a comprehensive national infrastructure for peace. And we need to see peace as a operational principle of our society. It is not that now. Well, if people are supportive of the idea, they should talk to their member of parliament about it. Um, I think it's really important. Members of parliament can second the bill. Up to 20 MPs can second the bill. Uh, as we talked today, I think about 15 have, which is again is very unusual because not uh, it, that's a very large number. It's usually not the case that that many second it. We're hoping to get the full 20. Uh, once we hit the 20, there's a motion on the order paper endorsing the principle of a Department of Peace so that we've got sort of an overflow position for more MPs. So it's very important that if people believe in this idea, to talk to their MPs, encourage them to second the bill or second the motion that's on the order paper. And uh, I think that's another way we can, uh, we can build uh, popular support for this idea. And even in just talking to your Member of Parliament about a Department of Peace, even if that person does not agree, it will, it will increase their knowledge, it will produce dialogue and openings towards a future day when they might be more willing to come along. Is there a website where people can find out more information? Absolutely, and they can see the bill on the website. Uh, it's called, it's www.departmentofpeace.ca. And that is, uh, we would, and there's a lot of information there and there's opportunities to comment and we'd love to hear from you.